Hey there, what's up? Santi here. Today I'm really excited to talk about Tana, why it is a game changer. But first, obviously, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. This is your daily page, and this is where you can expand on any bullet points, write as much as you want. Let's say that I want to zoom into this one, write something here. As you can see, I already wrote some gibberish. I would go back, go back, and I can collapse things. In here, I can write anything and I can tag it to do. And what's really powerful about Tana is that I can use these shortcuts to filter by a particular tag, in this case, to do as a list. So show me all my to do's as a list. If I want to filter them by only the ones that aren't done, I can do that. Something I love is that with a shortcut, you can just reorganize them. Maybe I want to do this one first, this one later and so on. And it doesn't even end there. You can do all types of things such as show me only the ones that are also tagged to do and research. That way I can only filter the ones that have to do and research and you can have them there. You can rename these so to do is to research. And because it's essentially just a bullet point, you can literally drag it and drop it in here. Now, it doesn't matter wherever you are, you can just go there and you can start checking off the tasks. So that barely scratches the surface. And before we carry on to compare Tana to other programs, I'm going to show you something else that I have on my private workspace. Right. So here I have a list of songs and guitar covers that I want to do, you know, songs that I want to play in the guitar. I actually prefer seeing these in a table. So this is basically the table version where you can actually organize things by fields. You can have more information, anything that you don't want in there. You can also add additionally here, for instance, here I have a link to the song on YouTube. Something that I actually configured is that the name on the left in here is based on whatever I write on the fields. That's just something I love to make things way more efficient. Another view that you can have is cards here. For instance, I can organize by artists and that way I just have like, you know, all the songs by this guy, by this guy. And what's crazier is that I can even click on this bullet point. I can organize all the information in there. I can also see where I created this. So this was in a bullet point just called organizing songs where I just started putting a lot of this and I can see when did I even create this. So yesterday, here's where I have more private stuff. So I won't show you, but that's the idea. Basically anything that is tag guitar cover or music is going to be filtered there. And you can do really advanced stuff. Like for instance, I'm just filtering by music. That's all I'm filtering by. But what I can do is I can set guitar covers as an extension of music. And then it just interacts in amazing ways that I'll explore in some other video. You can configure this thing to just add all types of things and I can just change the color if I like. And honestly, the kind of stuff you can do in advance is just ridiculous. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. You can organize books, you can organize podcast episodes. Right now, we're really gonna analyze what you can really do with it and why it's such a game changer app. So in here, I have a couple of points outliner, database, to-dos, and writing. Some of the things that Tan is capable of and how it compares to other apps. So first, let's start with outliner because there's other apps that are very good at it. As you can see here, we have Rome. Woo! <laughs> Rome has been a pioneer who really revolutionized the whole PKM space, making it about linking and embedding, but pretty much Tana, everything you can embed, like as easy as copy paste, which is just revolutionary. And then on the other hand, we have Loxig right here. Oh, that didn't work. Which made these concepts accessible. And it's still, if you're looking for something free, Tana is not going to be free. So I still highly recommend Loxig if you're looking for something where you can own your data and you can do it for free. So that is really a huge difference. And that's why Tana targets different type of people. Now, the main reason that Tana is better than both of these apps is because Tana also is a database. You know, obviously we can have something like Notion to compare it with, but database, in case you're confused by what that exactly means, I'm going to simplify it by calling it a filter table where you can sort things, you can reorganize information and filter it in different ways. That's pretty much what it is. And if you use Notion, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And until now, there's been nothing that has been a suitable alternative to what Notion can do. So I've always had a love-hate relationship with Notion because it's super powerful, it's amazing, but it's also slow. And you also feel like all your information is trapped in there forever, which I don't love. So I also am a really big believer on the fact that you have to use the best tool for the right job, right? And that's why so far I've used different apps for different purposes. And still, Tana doesn't replace everything. That's what I'm going to get into in the other bullet points. But yeah, using the right tool for the right job is something that I've discussed in this video right here. You can check it out. But that's the reason why I didn't really use Notion for everything like some people do, because to me, it's just good at a couple of things, but it's not to me, it just wasn't good enough. So that's what takes me to the other point of to do's, which some people like to track their to do's in something like Notion. I used to do it in to do is I've always been curious about workflows that integrate their to do's with their notes. And I've tried that. I've tried that heavily in Logsig, in Obsidian, in Notion. I've done it everywhere. But to me, I decided Decided it was better for me to just use a dedicated app such as to do is right here in an app dedicated for that purpose. But I really wanted sometimes to just link some tasks and link some projects to my actual notes, because obviously a lot of what I write in my personal reflections 
related to actionable things that I want to work on, project and so on. So Dana has finally helped me solve this by actually having a really nice setup. I'm working on something a bit more advanced that I want to share with you. So if you're interested in that, do let me know. But finally, I can have my tasks and my notes in the same place because of Tana. So that's groundbreaking. That's really, really amazing. Now, the other point that I want to cover is writing tools such as Obsidian. I absolutely love Obsidian, has so many advantages. And when I started getting into Tana, I said like, oh man, is this gonna replace Obsidian? And I think it's definitely replaced parts of it, but Obsidian is still the best writing tool for me because I can use Beam shortcuts. I can write in a text editor that's meant for long form writing, meaning that that's where I still write my blog posts and book projects that I want that I'm working on. So anything that's kind of longer writing, I still do it here because Tana, everything's a bullet point and and that's amazing for lots of purposes but when it comes to writing a full blog post or a full book you know bullet point by bullet point is not the best format to write so until tana develops something better to write more at length i still prefer obsidian which is why i'm using obsidian and tana side by side while other apps that i love like logseek I'm replacing with Tana a Notion. I'm kind of happy to finally have found a really good alternative that integrates my notes with my tables. So that's the basic idea. Now, as you can see, there's all these apps. We have all the different contestants, but now I'm happy to say that all of these things integrate into this beauty that is called Tana. And as you saw, I didn't include Obsidian here because I don't think Tana yet replaces Obsidian, which is great news because I love Obsidian. It's really trying to congregate a lot of these different things and the context switching of app to app sometimes is really annoying. So for me, it's worth it to put together all of these apps while still using tons of other apps for more particular purposes, such as space repetition. That's something that I'm not gonna do in Tana. I don't do space repetition or flashcards in any of these. For that, I use Anki or Mochi. So Tana doesn't replace everything. It just replaces these ones right here that I'm showing you right now. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a good idea of where I'm at, how I'm approaching Tana. And I'm very excited to announce that I'm working on an online course for Tana because all of these things that I've been trying to achieve for years are finally coherent in one system. So a couple of systems that I've had for organizing projects and developing in different apps to try to teach you, I finally feel I can teach it in Tana. If you're interested to be one of the first to know when I release this Tana course, do check out the link in the description. I'm super excited. I really have been spending all my time in Tana. I've been really obsessed about it. And this video, I just really wanted to make something that helps you understand what Tana is. So please let me know if you have any questions. And before we wrap it up, I do want to give you a piece of advice that has helped me a lot when it comes to adapting to new technologies and not feeling too frustrated of moving from one app to the other. Like first, technology advances, right? And just because technology improves, it doesn't mean that you always need to go to the next thing. If you're comfortable with the apps that you're using, stay with them. If you haven't exploited every single bit of the app that you're currently using and you still feel like it does what you need it to do, then remain, you know, stay in there. Don't feel pressure because of all the hype. And also just to help you manage your expectations, do keep in mind that Tana right now has a long waiting list. People have been waiting for quite a while. So jump on in there if you're interested to give it a try in the future. But like I said, like if the apps that you're currently using work, then keep using them. And later when you find your limitations, actually you can move to another app. And another interesting point is that you might feel that whatever you learn in another app, let's say Logsig, Rome, or any of these that I showed, if you do end up moving to other apps like Tana, just keep in mind that a lot of the skills that you develop in these other apps do do come with you. So I don't want you to feel like you're standing from scratch all the time. Like there's something that you're taking with you. Oh no, why didn't you tell me I left the mouse in here? <laughs> I'm so sorry. But yeah, pretty much if you have tools that help you get the job done, stay with those until you feel they no longer serve you and only switch when it makes sense to you. So yeah, let's carry on the conversation here in the comments. In Twitter, I'm also pretty actively talking about Tana. So check it out there. And I hope to see you soon. See you later. Bye. And I feel your pain. I hope you get an invite to Tana soon. <laughs> See ya.